House GOP leaders are planning a vote on Thursday on a proposed amendment to the Constitution requiring a balanced budget. That vote comes as Congress continues to struggle to pass legislation to increase the government's borrowing limit and avoid a default before the August 2nd deadline. Many Tea Party-backed lawmakers insist on that amendment before they would consider voting for an increase to the debt limit. We'll break down what that amendment would mean in just a minute. Despite President Obama's appeal for a compromise, Democrats and Republicans continue to push ahead with their competing plans. So let's take a look at them. The Republican plan, unveiled by House Speaker John Boehner, would impose $1.2 trillion in cuts to domestic agencies over the next decade. It also raises the debt ceiling by a trillion dollars in two phases, one to fund the government through this year, another to allow the government to pay its bills starting in January. Although late this evening, House Republican leaders are said to be rewriting their reduction plan after receiving an estimate that it won't cut as much spending as advertised. Now, Majority Leader Harry Reid said that plan will not get through the Senate, and the White House threatened today that even if it does, it will be vetoed. On the flip side, the White House is getting behind a proposal by Harry Reid, which cuts $2.7 trillion. The plan does not include any new tax revenue, despite what President Obama has demanded, including as recently as last night. But critics say the plan does not include any real tax cuts. But unlike the Republican plan, it would extend the debt ceiling into 2013 in Obama ultimatum. In Fox 19's Commitment to Balanced News, here both men defend their respective plans. In short, it's everything Republicans have demanded wrapped up in a bow and delivered to their door. But now Republicans say their demands, which have been met in full, aren't enough. The president's looking for a blank check. Uh, we have a bill that uh, is a reasonable approach, uh, we negotiated with the Senate leadership, uh, that really is common sense. There is so much being said during this debt ceiling debate. It's, you know, it's hard to keep up with. Are you confused? One viewer wants to know why the obvious isn't being dealt with. So in tonight's reality check, Ben is hitting reply all. Reply all simply means instead of just responding to one viewer at a time, Reality Check will share our reply with everyone. So here was the question. Glenn Sterling of Villa Hill says, All this debate, bickering, and proselytizing over the budget and the debt ceiling, yet the simple and logical solution to preventing this from happening again seems to be getting lost in the fog. A balanced budget amendment. How could anyone with even a modicum of financial common sense be opposed to this? For those of you who might not know, the House last week passed the only measure that has been passed by Congress so far in this debate. And that measure is known as cut, cap, and balance. Cut, cap, and balance would allow the feds to have their $2.7 trillion increase they're asking for while making, one, cuts. Substantial cuts in spending that will reduce the deficit next year and each year after that for at least 10 years. For the year 2012, it would have cut spending by $111 billion in future spending. Two, cap. Enforceable spending caps that tie how much the feds can spend to how much tax revenue is being taken in. So the bill would have capped future spending at 18% of GDP, or our gro nation's gross domestic product. And then three, balance. Congressional passage of a balanced budget amendment to the U.S. Constitution, but only if it includes both a spending limitation and a supermajority, or a two-thirds vote, for raising taxes, in addition to balancing revenues and expenses. That is cut, cap, and balance. But after making it through the House, the measure died in the Senate when it was tabled. Today, there's talk that Republicans will now bring back and push again for a vote on a balanced budget amendment. Which, if it were to happen, by the way, it would take at least seven years to work its way through the states because each state has to vote on it. But one of the major issues here is that there is strong opposition to a balanced budget amendment from some lawmakers, including the president himself, who said this last week. We don't need a constitutional amendment to do our jobs. The Constitution already tells us to do our jobs and to make sure that the government is living within its means and making responsible choices. But the reality is that the government is not living within its means and the American people know it. Maybe that's why a new CNN poll shows that two out of every three Americans supports cut, cap, and balance. Despite the fact that Harry Reid called the measure the worst piece of legislation in history, 63% of Democrats support it and 65% of independents do as well. So here's what you need to know. At the end of the day, most Americans, two out of every three, seem to support cut, cap, and balance 
because the one thing that most Americans can probably agree on is that they don't trust politicians. And that is Reality Check. You can see Ben's sources for this story and all the others by visiting the Reality Check section of our website. You can also comment on the story by visiting Ben's Facebook page. Just search Ben Swan, WXIX. We'd also like to hear your thoughts on the debt ceiling debate and the balanced budget amendment. You can call the Fox 19 rant line, 513-655-RANT, or simply let us know about it on our Facebook page.